Welcome to my backyard. I know I started this channel at probably the wrong time of year. It is already late in the summer, end of August, first week of September. I probably should have gotten going on this earlier in the year, but it wasn't until I had family and friends asking for help getting their yards nicer that I figured that I should start this channel. Since this year, my yard took a big jump in the quality that it has the last couple of years. Here's a photo of my son in his sandbox last year where you can get a sense of how thin and unhealthy the grass looked last year. This year I wanted to get a jump on next year, so the best time to prepare for a good looking yard for next year is right now. So I'm going to do a dethatch and an overseed for the fall. Now I know this is a little early to be calling it fall since at the time of filming it was September 3rd, but where I live in central Canada, we have to start worrying about frost and snow before Halloween. And you want to make sure your grass is well established before the snow flies and frost sets in. This photo was our front yard and driveway on the 12th of November of 2021. And we already had a foot of snow. You can see my son's confusion on his first real look at winter here. Now the grass seed I will be using is a blend of 70% Kentucky bluegrass, 20% creeping red fescue, and 10% perennial ryegrass that is produced by North Star Seeds in Nipua, Manitoba that I bought at a local soil and landscape supply company. A 10 kilogram bag or around 22 pound bag cost me $180 Canadian after taxes. I would have liked to have done a straight Kentucky bluegrass, but finding a supply of good quality straight Kentucky bluegrass on short notice was difficult, at least in my region. So during the winter, I will look for a good supply I can get in Canada. Fescue and perennial rye are fast germinating grass and can start sprouting in around a week. Kentucky bluegrass takes two to three times longer. So if I want the Kentucky bluegrass to be established before Halloween, I had to get on it. So the game plan was core aerate, mow short as I can without stressing grass too much. More on that later. Dethatch and perpendicular directions, overseed, and fertilize. So to start, I wanted to do a core aeration. This would loosen a few places where I've been starting to get some compaction in the soil, get some water and fertilizer straight to the roots, and a place for the grass seed to collect as well. The machine I was using, I rented from my local Home Depot and cost me around $80 for four hours. I think I should have done another pass on some spots in the yard, but that machine was a workout to use, even with it being self-propelled and I wanted to make sure I was able to get it back in time. Next time I do this, I'll probably do the full day rental. Now I was able to do my 8,000 square feet, clean the machine and return it in about two and a half hours. Now as a tip, make sure you go through and clean out any grass plugs and the tines of the machine before you return it. Otherwise, you'll get a $75 cleaning fee. My oldest daughter and I were able to clean out all the plugs in about five minutes with a couple of screwdrivers and the hose. Now, after the aeration, I wanted to let the yard sit for a couple of days, let the plugs dry out a bit so they were easier to break down with the mower. Some people collect the plugs immediately with the mower and bag them, but I like the idea of returning the dirt as a light top dressing. A couple of days after the aeration, it was time to start the heart of the project. I didn't want to mow for as long as possible to allow the grass seed the best chance of taking root first. I also wanted to make sure that the dethatcher was able to get down closer to the dirt surface to lift the debris off the ground. So I normally cut my grass around two and a half inches. This time I dropped my mower a few notches to get it a one time closer cut. And I screwed it up. I dropped it too low, scalped my yard in a couple of places. I didn't think I did too much damage, but I'll have to keep an eye on those areas. So I raised the mower deck up a notch and was able to do the rest of the yard. After getting the lawn cut, it was time to do the dethatching. This spring I had tried to rent a power rake at Home Depot, but they refused to rent it that day due to it being too damp out and would ruin the lawn in their opinion. Well, my lawn wasn't too damp and I knew this. So instead I saw Canadian Tire had a Yardworks dethatcher for sale for $100. Now I know there's a difference between a power rake and a dethatcher, but I wanted to dethatch and was going to be setting the power rake really 
barely scraping the surface. So a regular light duty dethatcher would be fine. So I went, picked that up in the spring, used it on the one pass in the yard and pulled 11 bags of organic debris from the yard. This fall, when I used it, I only pulled about four bags of debris, but it still allowed a better chance for the grass seed to make contact with the soil directly. In between each pass, my daughter was helping by going over the lawn with the lawnmower and vacuuming up the debris and clippings. Now it's time to throw down some grass seed. For putting down the grass seed, I use the Scott's Turf Builder Mini Broadcast Spreader. It costs about $50 at most big box stores or lawn and garden centers. It isn't perfect or precise, but when working on a budget, I'd rather have one tool that works pretty good for many things than have a few tools that are perfect for the situation. So if you got a drop spreader, broadcast spreader, hand spreader, or just your hands, you use what you got. I have the broadcast spreader, so that's what I use. For overseeding, I put down two to three pounds of seed per thousand square feet. If you don't know how large of an area of grass you have, you can go out with a measuring tape and measure it out. Or I use the site mapdevelopers.com. I'll try and put a link in the description. And on the site, you can use a Google, Google map provided and draw out the area of your yard for the satellite image. And it auto calculates the area for you. It isn't super precise, but it is quick and easy to use to give you a guideline. My front yard, it is only 500 square feet. So I used about one and a half pounds of seed. Now, when it came to my backyard, I had 20, 20 and a half pounds of seed left in the bag and 7,500 square feet to do it. So I knew it was going to be a little light on the seed coverage that I wanted, but there are parts of my yard that are growing thick and lush. So they, the seed they could get would be much thinner there and focus on some thinner spots that needed more seed. So with the assistance of my wife, we got the rest of the bag of seed down, did a full hopper of grass seed evenly across the whole lawn, and then with the rest of the seed, did a couple of extra passes in the thinner spots and the larger dead spots. Some of the larger dead spots in the yard I will hit with just a touch more seed as well. After the first full pass, I had been working in the yard for almost six hours straight and hadn't been doing so well with keeping hydrated. So my wife sat me down and went for a walk with the spreader to finish it off for me. For the larger dead spot area that the grass seed was on, I spread a layer of peat moss to keep the grass seed in place and help keep it moist. For the main part of the yard, I wasn't as worried about spreading peat moss since the grass canopy will help trap moisture in and prevent seed from washing away. Now the part that is the easiest and most tedious of the whole process, watering. If it dries, it dies. This is a common phrase for grass seed among long enthusiasts. You don't want to water so much that it washes all your seed out, but you want to keep the seed damp to promote it germinating. For perennial rye and fescue, that is within about eight or nine days. The Kentucky bluegrass though is up to 21 days. So a light watering often as you can, water with the hose sprayer for smaller yards or hard to reach areas, or a sprinkler for a few pot on larger areas. I am watering by hand with the hose for my front yard and a few awkward areas in my backyard. But the majority of the yard, I'm running my fan sprinkler for about seven minutes in each spot to keep the seed damp. In about a week, I'll probably get some lawn starter fertilizer to put down but I don't want to put too much on too quick to promote the main lawn growing too fast and choking out the grass seed. In the meantime, after all the hard work, keep watering the seed, and while you are outside watering, crack a cold one and enjoy the backyard. <laughs>